It's Ben, and today I am very excited. I got a new toy from Adafruit. It is the ESP32-S2 uh, Feather TFT display, and I'm really excited to play with this thing. It looks really cool. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got some features that the other little gizmos don't have. It has a built-in screen. Behind me are some schematics. We'll go over it real quick, but uh, it looks pretty awesome. Alrighty, cool. Let's check it out. Okay, let's open this little puppy up. So, let's see. Oh, it's in a little bubble wrap. Let's see what we got here. So it is the Adafruit ESP32 TFT Feather. It's got four megs of flash and two megs of PS RAM. And it's got the Stemma QT connector there. Uh, this whole thing was, it was $25 with, you know, five fifty dollars of shipping. So $32 dollars and six cents to have it delivered all good came pretty quick here it is again if you need any of the numbers off of it let's see what we got here yeah i am really excited this has some real potential to have some uh, some fun projects because it, it apparently can have a file system on it and it does run, um, it can run Circuit Python, which uh, there are other devices run. It can also run uh, Arduino, which I am not really familiar with. And maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should install it and check it out. Why not? Oh, look how small this little beauty is. Oh, it's got a pinout connector. Uh-huh. Let's see what's going on here. So we've got that. We've got these little pinouts. I didn't know these came separate. Interesting. Well... You know, look how small that little sucker is. We should probably go through what is on this. Okay, I hope everyone can see here. Maybe I'll use this little pin out to point. So this, let's start with the largest, and this is kind of where the party starts, right here. This this little metal box, that is the um, ESP32-S2 chip. Now this is a 32-bit, um, 240 megahertz processor, single core. They do make dual core ones, and I say they, I mean the chip manufacturer does. I do not know if Adafruit uses them in anything, but it's got 2.4 gig Wi-Fi in it, and it runs a 802.11b, G, and N. 2.4 is good. Um, the bummer is it, well, not a bummer, but it just doesn't run like five gig. So if you're gonna build this into something that would, say, test your internal network, you know, and see if you could overload your Wi-Fi or create channels, you really can't do it with this. You can't do it on five gig, let's put it that way. But uh, it's still really cool. And it's got, you know, again, this is just feature rich, this little sucker. So what else do we have in here that I can identify? <laughs> it's kind of small, holding it upside down. Just try not to drop it like my usual. Um, so it looks like right here we have power. Let's look on the front here. Two different power. This could be um, rechargeable. Oh, that's data and power. This would just be power, a little like battery pack. Here's another little board. Um, uh, another little connector. I'm not sure what that is. That might be, I'm not sure what that is, but we also have a, what's this, a little reset button and a boot button, little clicky buttons. Here's our little screen with a screen protector. I'll take that off a little later. Wow. It's amazing how much they pack in this teeny little, teeny, teeny little gizmo. Um, well, it does, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't know what else to say about it other than it's amazing that it's got all this different storage and memory on it. And I think we should plug it in. Let's just see what it does when we plug it in. How about that? So I have, again, trying not to drop it. I drop everything. Here we go. Got that little data. It's already hooked up to my Raspberry Pi. Oh, that's USB-C. That is not this connector. I have the wrong power cord. See that? Um, let me get the right power cord. Okay, I have the right connector, a USB to USB-C connector. Let's see when we plug it in, what happens? Oh, powering on. I see a bunch of little LEDs. Ooh, and a fruit feather ESP32-S2 TFT demo shows the battery. Interesting, and then I2C0XB. So that's kind of its little default setup here. Let's see what happens when we hit the little reset buttons. Um, okay, so this is reset. Usually there's a sequence if you want to get into a certain mode. So that looks like just a 
reboots it. Let's see if we do too fast. One, two. Oh, there we go. Now we're into this. Let me take this off. Now we're into the uh, this spot where you can drop firmware on there, like those UF2 files. But I'm excited to try to get a um, file system on here and see if we can't provide a service. I understand you could even get a little web server running. And because it's Wi-Fi, it'll connect to your Wi-Fi. And then you connect to it as though it was a Wi-Fi access point and you can do things. It looks really neat. Okay, let's check this out further. Woo! -hoo. I thought I'd show you really quick how you kind of do the initial setup. So I have it plugged in it. And basically you need to go to the uh, Adafruit site and look up the device you have. So here it's the ESP32-S2. And you want to download the latest version of CircuitPython for this board. So I want it in English. I'll download it as a, oh, should I do it as a UF2 or a bin? I'm going to do 733, that much I'm sure. Let's do a UF2. Uh, we're going to allow it. Okay. That was quick, huh? Not too big. So it's, I'm just going to move it around to where I want it. Oops, let's drop it in. I created a folder already for it, so let's just drop it in here. And now we're gonna put the um, this device in the kind of uh, two clicks. There we go, the TFG Feather load mode. So I hit reset twice pretty quickly. Now it's gonna map it. So let's just create a new finder window. I'm doing this on a Mac, obviously. And if we scroll down, there it is. Feather, R, Feather S2 boot. Uh, there's a current UF2. Let's drop this on and see what happens. I kind of forget the pattern exactly, but I believe this is all we have to do for this part. Okay, it is rebooting. Had a fruit, there it is. If you can see at the top of the screen, sorry, I might've had it off there. 733 right there. And there's a little hello, hello world script that ran. Excellent, that part's done. Okay, now I wanna to connect to it with the Mu editor. So I'm gonna launch my Mu editor here. Let's see, so I'm trying to remember mode. Here we go. Okay, Circuit Python is obviously what we're gonna choose. Let's see if we can detect our board. Um, auto reload is on. Press any key to enter the repo. Okay, add a fruit feather, there we are, we're connected. It's that simple, I mean, look at that. How crazy is that? Can you see down here? Sorry, I was probably blocking it. Um, but there it is, it just says it's connected. So now we can, you know, create code and uh, get rolling, pretty slick. Okay, so here's our first tepl uh, tepl <laughs> here's our first test sample code. Um, it imports some libraries, board, digital I.O., and time. It's kind of neat, it highlights them. So it's gonna turn the LED on uh, half a second, and it's gonna just make it blink. So I've already saved the code to, the, um, to my hard drive on the laptop. And what I'm gonna do is go over to the finder window here. I'm gonna to connect to the uh, device circuit, but uh, here it is. So basically what I'm gonna do is, here's my little code, and I'm gonna move it over. Well, you actually have to call it, so let's move it over here first. So now it's actually on the device, but notice it's code PY. You have to remove this first. Why don't I back this up? Why don't I take this and just drag it over here? And we'll call this, um, this one was Hello World. So let's just, you can even see it in the window there, but I would say, Hello uh, World. How about that? That's it. Okay, so now we need to rename. Oh, the code didn't disappear. Let's delete that. Move trash. Boop. And then let's call this code. It has to be called code.py for it to run. So here we have this. And let's see, code running, soft reset. Now, do you see this little red LED blinking twice per second? 
pretty slick. I mean, that's that's pretty instantaneous, pretty simple. You know, the code gets more and more intense as you go, but that's pretty cool, right? Pretty neat. So you can control, there's different lights on there and all these little um, gold circles have different functions. Some are ground, some are power, and you can connect these uh, to all sorts of different devices. So you can turn this into a kind of a, an IOT device. You could hook up a temperature sensor. And because it has Wi-Fi, you could take that output from the sensor and put it somewhere and then do something with it. Like you could send it to a, I don't know, an S3 bucket or, you know, an Amazon, or you could send it to Azure and then process it. So, you know, it's kind of like these, you know, is it cheaper than just buying a device and you know, having a web app already? Uh, or a phone app, well, no, it's not gonna be cheaper, but that's not the point, right? The point is to kind of figure it out and see if you can do stuff like that. So you could create a thermostat and you could check it remotely. And who knows, you could even, if you tie it in enough, you could have it change the temperature, um, which is basically what these big companies are doing.